Newborn screening would have completely changed the trajectory of my family's life, but it didn't. My name is Lisa, and my husband and I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania. We have three children, Victoria, who would be turning eight this month, and identical twins, Isaiah and Caleb, who are four. My daughter, Victoria, was born in July of 2014, and she was perfectly healthy. She had big blue eyes, and we had no reason to expect that anything was wrong. About two weeks after she was born, I remember remarking to my husband that everything must have been okay from whatever that test was. When she was five and a half months old, it was like a switch flipped. She became a completely different baby. She stopped smiling, talking, laughing, playing, and we, get, we knew something was wrong. On January 30th, 2015, she had a CAT scan that led to, that led to diagnosis. We were then thrust into two weeks of hospitalization, tests, MRIs, things like that, genetic testing. And on Friday, February 13th, 2015, we were told that our daughter was dying. Even worse, in that appointment, the neurologist told us that if they had caught her condition, which was Crab A disease, through newborn screening, they could have treated it. Uh, Tori passed away at 20 months of age, and there was nothing we could do, and I can't tell you how hopeless we felt as parents. And so diagnosis day was truly the worst day of our lives. Three weeks after our daughter died, I attended my first newborn screening advisory board meeting. I went in initially only caring that Crab A was not being screened for, even though a law had been signed three or four months after Tori was born that they were supposed to screen for it. I ended up working very hard for six years with three different bills to do more than just see Crab A added as a result of my efforts. I used my degree, I used everything that I knew because lives were literally at stake. In the first seven months of screening, we identified four babies with Crab A. Four babies that have a completely different chance at life we were robbed of the opportunity to try to save our child's life. But now those parents had that chance. And what's even more meaningful is that two of those babies are identical twins that were born on Tori's birthday. The reason that I advocate can be summed up in one sentence. And that is that the depth of my love for my daughter is not measured by the number of tears that I have cried, but rather by the life I choose to live in her absence. I just try to encourage any family that wants to advocate to do it because it's not easy. You have to tell your story and your pain over and over again, but it's those stories that are going to move people to action because they don't know. They don't know what it's like to have a child who is diagnosed with something that could have been treated.